they based it in philly and the kid is excited hello welcome have a seat would you like a cup of tea you might be asking why is she talking like this and who's she she is dara I'm here for dear Hallmark. And I'm talking like this because we are reviewing Fit for Prince. And I feel like this is the way that I have to talk because of the nature of the film. It's like, no, I'm not gonna do this the entire time. But y'all, Fit for Prince premiered March 6th on the Hallmark channel. And I got something to say about it. Let's get into it, shall we? So, Fit for a Prince is starring some people whose names I forget, but they'll be in the description. We have Prince Ronan. Can we talk about that name? That name exudes strength, regality, and a sense of distinguishedness. I know that's not a word, but I'm still going to say it. I love that name. It it sounds like a pillar. Ronin. That's a oh that name. And then we have Cindy Cordella, I think her name is. That last name, Cordella, that's a dope name. So Cindy works for first of all, let me make sure her name is Cindy. Natalie Hall and Jonathan Kills. Yeah. I was correct. Her name is Cindy. Um, and it stars it stars. It stars Natalie Hall and Jonathan Geltz. That's what I found in my research. You have to say research like that when we're talking about royal things, you know. So Cindy Cordella is the head seamstress for the Rebecca Roslin Fashion House of Philadelphia. Two points for it being based in my hometown. I am just like, I, as soon as I saw City Hall, I screamed. I said, look, finally. It's been a couple of years, but Philly is, because everything's either in Colorado, we got Washington, Oregon, New York, or in the summer, everything's in the South, so. And in the fall, everything's in Vermont, so. I was happy to see Philly on the kid. I was really happy. So, Cindy Cordella is the head seamstress at the Rebecca Roslyn Fashion House. And there is this big gala. And I normally say gala, but again, this is fit for a prince. So there's this big gala that is approaching us. And Rebecca is assigned four dresses. American royalty. The Hamiltons. And why, as soon as I heard the Hamiltons. <laughs> I want to be in the room where it happens. The room where it happens. The room where it happens. <laughs> So she is designing a dress for American royalty, the Hamilton women. We have Gloria Hamilton, Virginia Hamilton, and the 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 daughter. I don't know her name. That daughter was so annoying. Oh my gosh, her fake laughs literally. It was it was like the worst aftertaste in life. So. Like, Rebecca and Cindy's relationship seems okay as a boss to uh employee. But it seems like Rebecca just is just out here for the looks and the optics. And Cindy is the main one doing the work. So, Cindy is minding her seamstress business. Cranked up the tunes and is getting ready to work. And who walks in but the homie himself, Prince Ronan. Now, Prince Ronan is a strong friend of the family to the Hamiltons. Gloria Hamilton, the mom, is like his aunt. Like his, you know, like, you know, we all got those 
friend of the family members that we as children grow up with call an auntie and uncle only to realize that they're not really our blood related auntie and uncle i feel like that's what he is to the hamiltons he comes in she's he startles cindy and she's like oh my gosh you're prince roman he's like that's a fact jack and so he begins to converse with her about um the ball that's coming up and he's like y'all do suits what what, what what's, what's happening y'all do some suits and she's like i mean sir you can do whatever you want like whatever you want we have it this is burger king have it your way so he leaves and then he looks back and's like and asks her to lunch and she's all kerfuffled and bewildered as to why he would ask her to lunch she's like because i'm me and you're you and that dude was <laughs> that dude lathered all the honey mustard in the bottle on the kid like <laughs> he was he was really putting it on thick so i want to go through this movie but I don't want to belabor the point. I want you guys to watch it. We know that she's going to get with the prince at the end. And can we talk about the Cinderella tendencies? I feel like they were low-key trying to give us Cinderella without giving us Cinderella. And I peak game. We have the evil stepmother who was Gloria Hamilton. She wasn't checking for Cindy the minute Cindy walked in. She's like, who is this Komina? And then we have the three or the two evil stepsisters and Gloria Hamilton's daughter. And then who is supposed to be Ronan's date to the gala, Julia. They grew up together um, and Julia's mom wants her to marry Ronan because, you know, it's like they're of the same upper crust of the peanut butter and jelly sandwich that is life. So... Julia and Hamilton's daughter is just out here for Cindy and they're sabotaging her entire life. And Cindy's just like, fine, I don't fit in. You can just have this whole world. And of course, Ronan is like, I don't even want this whole world. What I want is you. That ending was three bags of Cheetos. It was so cheesy. I could, I literally did like this to the to the screen it was so cheesy all in all though i enjoyed it i give it a three and a half crown rating and here is why the acting the acting i'm gonna say it one more time for the holy ghost the acting of our supporting characters like it was not good. <laughs> it was not good. So 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 Cindy's um work friend or friend in real life. I don't even do we get his name? I don't even know his name, y'all. His acting was not good. And then there's two other people who work in the fashion house who don't say nothing, but yet the camera is always on them. And I'm like, it's so awkward. All they do is just look at each other. And then people talk to them, but they still, they just go. And I'm like, at least give them one or two lines to make it look like they're human and they're not extras. Ugh. And then this Hamilton daughter, I wanted to do an Uncle Phil, Jazzy Jeff, throw out the house moment. Like, she is the weakest link. Oh my gosh. Her fake laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh it was deplorable oh it was i'm talking it was hefty it was glad it was trash it was all of the brands of trash bags it was all of... i couldn't do i i just and then here is my biggest bone to pick with this movie the abrupt 180 transformation of Julia's evil tendencies to now all of a sudden she is Cindy's number one fan. 
where they do that at. It was extremely abrupt. I feel like they needed to, uh, they built up the Julia. I did like Julia over the Hamilton daughter. So I was like, okay, she's our villain. Okay. But I'm thinking like, what in the world? Like all of a sudden, this is your night to shine. Everyone's looking at you. Your light is just shining so bright. The whole world, you just eclipse everyone in this entire room. All hail Queen Cindy is basically what she should have said. I was not here for that. I was not here for that. And I was not here for that. <laughs> and then who in their right mind would go casual to a, a ball at the Hamilton residence? Speaking of residence. We were given another grand estate that they said was in Chestnut Hill. I peeped again. I mean, that thing looked like the Philadelphia Art Museum. And I loved every square inch in foot of it. I loved it all. I loved it all. <laughs> oh, that estate was wonderful. It was glorious. It was divine. I wish I would have seen the kitchen. But I'm back. So I was like, who in their right mind would go casual to any type of event at the Hamilton house? Anyone? 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 You? You? No? 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 Oh, okay. Even if she said, oh, yeah, it's going to be a prank. We're going to be like... You don't know any of them that well to A, believe them, B, want to prank someone. What in the world? What was cute, though, is that when Ronan saw her and then said, who put you up to this, blah, 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 blah. And then we don't see him for a while. And then he comes back in a t-shirt and jeans. I thought that that was cute. Um, you know, we have some fake falling. It's indicative of it. It wouldn't be a Hallmark movie if there wasn't fake falling. Um, like I said, I give this a 3.5 crown rating out of five. What's y'all's crown rating out of five? How much would you, how many crowns would you give this movie? Um, do you think this is Hallmark's best royal movie? Because I did some thinking. So we have a royal New Year's Eve. That was Sam Page and that accent. I couldn't get past it. It was horrible. I felt like that movie could have been really great. In fact, their best one. Had he not have had that accent, I think he could have just did it him. Because Sam Page is a dope actor. What was it? Christmas in Rome? Hello. Like, brother can act. But that accent was another character all in of itself. Um, there's a crown for Christmas. There's a princess for Christmas. There's... Um, What's the one we had with my guy from uh, Coming Home for Christmas? Christmas Carousel. Hated that one. Not hated, but it just wasn't my favorite. Um, what other royal movies? The one with Lacey Chabert that was also, I think, based in Philly. That That's the one I haven't seen yet. I don't know. Can Oh, a royal holiday. How could I forget about a royal holiday? That one. I think that was their best royal movie. We have Aaron's Feet. We just have a Broadway... What's the word? Smorgasbord. Like, it was just amazing. It was amazing. It was amazing. So I think Royal Holiday is their best one. I did like this one, though. I liked... First of... Oh. <laughs> Whoever did Natalie Hall's wardrobe and makeup... Two roses for you, Mamersar. Cindy looked gorgeous. There was this one outfit where it was like a pastel blue with like dark pastel flowers all over the dress. And then they took from that with the lip color. And like her makeup was just gorgeous. And her outfits, I was taking notes. I loved the heels she was wearing. I loved her outfits in this movie. I loved it. Um, 
That's probably where that extra half crown comes from. It's from makeup and wardrobe. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Ronan's suits were tailored to perfection. Loved it. Um, oh my gosh, I'm already at 15 minutes. Okay. Well, that's going to conclude this review for Fit for a Prince. I won't be able to see you guys until Spring Fling, which is after March 20th. However, um, I may review some older Hallmark movies because I just saw Unleashing Mr. Darcy for the first time, starring Mr. Pavey. And I got something to say. Oh, I got some things to say. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do a video on Unleashing Mr. Darcy because... Uh-uh. <coughs> Mm-mm. Well friends romans countrymen that's going to conclude this review for fit for a prince i will see you guys in our first spring fling review with chasing don't go chasing waterfalls um that premieres march 20th and i'm going to do a spring fling mini sewed on instagram so please make sure you're following the dear hallmark instagram so that you can find all the extra hallmarkish content that you will not find on the youtube channel here so i will see you guys in the next video